Thank you. Thank you, Olivia, for giving me the opportunity to present this research. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, uh, the weather is good outside, so you have come here. So thank you very much. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk about data-driven decision-making uh, under uncertainty with entropic risk measure. Uh, this is a joint work with Professor Eric Delage from HEC Montreal and Professor Angelo Giorgio from uh, mm -hmm. University of Cyprus. Um, so let, let me give you my academic background. I did my BTEC and uh, master's from IIT Kanpur. Uh, then I joined the PhD program uh, at HEC Montreal and worked with, under the supervision of Professor George Zekul. After that, I did my postdoc uh, with uh, Professor Eric Delage, Professor Angelo Giorgio, and Professor Mehmet Gumush. Uh, my research interests lie in multi-agent systems, and I use tools from game theory, robust optimization, machine learning, and control theory to study these problems. So the outline of this talk is as follows. I will talk about entropic risk measure. Some of you might know uh, expon uh, exponential utility functions. They are closely related. Uh, then I will talk about the bias that can result from estimating entropic risk measure from finite number of samples. I will provide two procedures to correct this bias. The first one is based on risk matching using optimal transport. And the second is based on extreme value theory. Once I show you that we can correct the bias using these two procedures, I will illustrate the benefit of bias correction in tuning the radius of ambiguity sets in distributionally robust optimization. At the end, I will conclude with uh, some numerical experiments to illustrate our theory. Okay, so the problem is as follows. You have two options. You can gamble. With 50% probability, you get a loss of $50. And with 50% probability, you get a loss of $100. You have another option that is a fixed loss of $75. Now, if you are risk neutral, you should be indifferent between these two options because both these options give you a loss of $75. However, experimental evidence suggests otherwise. Most people would choose option two. Uh, and this can be explained using the fact that agents are risk averse. One of the risk measures that is widely used is entropic risk measure to account for the risk aversion behavior of agents. Now we want uh, these risk measures to satisfy certain nice properties. Okay, So we say our functional row, which takes a random variable as input and outputs a real number. We say that dysfunctional is a convex law invariant risk measure if it satisfies these four properties. First one is cash invariance. What this says is as follow is following. If you inject M dollars into a risky position denoted by psi, then the risk of that position should reduce by M. Another property is monotonicity. If psi is almost always less than or equal to psi prime, then the risk of psi should be less than or equal to the risk of psi prime. The risk measure should encourage diversification, which is evident from this property. And lastly, if two random variables have the same distribution, their risk should be the same. Now, entropic risk measures satisfy all those four properties, and it is a, thus it is a convex law invariant risk measure. Suppose we have a random variable psi. Uh, we call it the uh, parameter that uh, controls the uncertainty in our model. This psi is distributed according to this uh, distribution fee. L of psi is the loss associated with psi. Okay. Now we can define our entropic risk measure. What you do is you scale this loss by alpha, you take the exponent, and you get the expected utility. Now you take the log and divide by alpha. This is what we call as the entropic risk measure where alpha is the risk aversion parameter. Now here, uh, we make the assumption that the tails of this loss are bounded. This ensures that our uh, risk measure, the risk that we are computing is finite. Also, uh, under certain um, assumption, we can also ensure that the variance of this uh, e to the power alpha uh, L psi is bounded, and we need these two uh, to exist. Okay, okay. So now 
Why are we studying entropic risk measure? Because it's widely used, because it has it, it has this property, which is time consistency. And in many fields, for instance, finance, revenue management, robotics, statistics, and reinforcement learning, we want our risk measure to satisfy this time consistency property. Until now, I assume that this distribution P was known to us, right? However, in the real world, this P is not known. What we have is a, is a data set of samples, psi1 hat, psi2 hat, psi n hat, which are sampled from P. Now, what we can do is based on this empirical distribution, we can uh, based on this data, we can construct an empirical distribution which puts a mass of one by n at each of the scenarios. Now, what we can obtain is the sample average approximation where I have replaced P with P hat. Do you have any question until now? Okay. So we have this risk measure, uh, the, uh, this risk based on our empirical distribution P hat. Now, if you estimate the risk based on these samples, you can see that there is bias in the estimate of your risk. Now, the, the reason that we are uh, using this risk measure is that we want to measure the risk, right? So the whole purpose of estimating the risk is defined if we underestimate this risk, right? So we want the risk, we want to, uh, we want to estimate the risk correctly, okay? So now let's see why we have an underestimation issue. To see this, we can, uh, we need to look at the influence function of the entropic risk measure. This influence function measures the sensitivity of the entropic risk to addition of a point mass at a realization of the random variable psi. So on the x-axis, we have realizations of psi. On the y-axis, I have a distribution for psi. Now you can see that the darker shades represent higher in influence function. Here is the formula for the influence functions. So you can see that the events which have low probability have the highest influence on this entropic risk measure. So by adding a small or removing a small mass from here, I can change the entropic risk significantly. And this is the reason that we have an underestimation issue because these samples have a low probability and they affect our, our uh, entropic risk significantly. So now the, the question would be, can we add tails to our data so that we can correct the entropic risk, right? So we will see some procedures which try to correct the estimation, uh, the bias. Another way to see this uh, bias is using the Jensen's inequality. Now, Jensen's inequality says that the empirical entropic risk underestimates the true entropic risk. A another alternative representation of entropic risk is a solution of this optimization problem. So you can obtain this entropic risk by solving this problem. You don't know P, you will replace this P with P hat, right? And once you will replace this P with P hat, you will see that this row p hat will underestimate the true risk. This is due to the fact that solving an SAA problem leads to an optimistic bias, right? So these are uh, three ways to see that there is an underestimation issue that can arise uh, when we are using limited data to estimate the entropic risk. Now let's look at the asymptotics uh, for, um, for our error. So, from uh, central limit theorem and delta method, you can show that this error, uh, this uh, row of p n hat minus row p follows a normal distribution with mean zero and this variance. Okay. Now this is an asymptotic result. We also know that e to the power alpha psi can be heavy tail even when psi is light tail. Consider psi to be Gaussian, then we know that e to the power alpha psi would be a log normally distributed random variable. Now, what happens is, if, if we have a light tail distribution, we know that we can get fast convergence of sample mean to the true mean. However, for, what, for, for heavy tail random variables, this convergence rate is quite slow.
and in robust statistics, uh, that is why we are uh, we are looking for estimators uh, which have better convergence rate for heavy tail random variables. So from central limit theorem, we know that with probability at least one minus eta, the mu n hat converges to mu at this sub Gaussian rate. So what does this mean? This means that if I want to reduce eta by a particular level, the number of samples that I need would be logarithmic. However, here from Chebyshev's inequality, we know that if, if we only assume that the sigma, that is the standard deviation is finite, then the number of samples are proportional to eta. So we need a large number of samples to, uh, uh, we need a large number of samples to reduce uh, eta by the same value. Now, this also holds in the finite sample case, this bound holds in the finite sample case if the random variable is Gaussian. However, if the random number is, the random variable is not Gaussian, we, uh, there could be distributions which achieve this rate, right? So the problem is in robust statistics, we know that the sample mean has a slow convergence rate to the true mean. So what they want is to achieve, is to design estimators which have this sub Gaussian rate. One of these estimators is the median of means estimator. What you do is you take your data, you divide this data into B bins, you compute the means over each bin, then you compute the median of these means. So what you get is a median of mean estimator. Another uh, thing we could do is we could fit a GMM to our data and estimate the risk, right? So GMMs have a universal function approximation property that they can estimate any probability distribution, which is smooth under some regularity conditions. However, there are some challenges in maximum likelihood estimation of uh, uh, for Gaussian mixture models. First one is singularities. What, ha what can happen is uh, there could be one component of GMM which explains only one data point and your covariance could be infinite. So there could be issues with learning these GMMs. Another issue is that uh, this problem of maximum likelihood for GMM is a non convex problem. Finally, there is non-identifiability in the sense that if you permute the components of a GMM, you can achieve the same probability distribution which is required for consistency of um, maximum likelihood estimators. Now, in, this, uh, in, in the literature, expectation maximization algorithm is typically used to solve the maximum likelihood estimation problem. However, this expectation maximization algorithm can converge to local optima. Okay, so, Let's look at uh, a project selection problem and see the performance of uh, all these models that I have shown to you on this problem. So we have three projects. Project one, which has a loss of zero psi. Project two has a loss of 0.4 times psi. And project three has a loss of 0.8 psi. This psi is a Gaussian mixture. Go, go, go. This psi follows a Gaussian mixture model with uh, components phi, mu, and uh, sigma. Uh, so there are total five components, and this is the mean, and this is the uh, covariance matrix. Now we assume that alpha is free, and our goal is to find the project with the lowest entropic risk. So we have samples of uh, we have samples. So we have basically hundred data sets of eight thousand samples, and we want to make a decision based on these hundred sets of. Uh, 8,000 samples. So let's look at the estimate of the entropic risk from these models. This magenta represents the entropic, is, is the true entropic risk for project one, two, and three. You can see. Uh, for uh, project two, the entropic risk is the minimum. Now you can see that SA underestimates the true entropic risk. The Gaussian mixture model also un underestimates the true entropic risk. And uh, this is also true for median of means estimator. So now what we want to do is we want to push this SAA close to this point, right? The median of this SAA to this point here, okay? And if we can do that, then we have corrected the error in the estimate of the entropic risk. 
So I will show you two procedures to do this bias correction. First one is this uh, risk matching based approach. And the second one is extreme value theory based approach. So let's look at the bias. The bias is basically rho p minus expectation of rho p hat, right? This is the bias. But we don't know p. If we knew p, we could have corrected it, right? So in the literature, uh, people do bootstrapping to estimate the risk. So what you do is you take samples, which are given to you. Now you repeatedly sample n values with replacement from this data set and you compute this risk. And using this estimate, you can correct the bias. However, and it is known that you can get asymptotic, strong asymptotic consistency for random variables with finite variance. Okay. However, this result is asymptotic and it relies on the central limit. <laughs> Okay, works. Okay, so so what we want is bias correction for finite number of samples, right? So uh, so we have this chi, which is uh, the set of uh, loss values. What we want is to have to basically construct a Gaussian mixture model whose samples have the same bias as the sam as the bias in our samples. So we fit a GMM to the loss scenarios. We compute the entropic risk over the n samples from this GMM. Next, we we sample and uh, next we repeat this procedure m times. We will get a sequence rho one, rho two, and rho m, right? Once we have the sequence, we can compute the bias, which is median of rho g minus. So basically, this uh, this is the median of this uh, this set. Okay, so because rho g is constant, so you just set, subtract the median of this set from rho g, you will get the bias. Okay, is everybody clear about the procedure? Now the only issue is how should we estimate this GMM, which will have the same bias as the bias in the sample. So we have this procedure based on risk matching uh, and optimal transport. So let me give you a very, very brief uh, tutorial on optimal transport. Suppose we have a pile of dirt with a mass distribution mu, and we want to efficiently transport this pile of dirt into this hole of distribution uh, nu. Okay. So uh, this problem was proposed, uh, pro formalized by Monge. Who, who said that if you can solve this optimization problem and find this map T, then you have identified the optimal plan to transport this, uh, to basically transform this measure mu into this measure nu. Now, the problem is that this, uh, this optimization problem is quite hard. In fact, it may not even have a solution. So Kantrovich uh, relaxed this problem and now the problem is to find a coupling pi, which has marginals mu and nu, which minimize this cost. If you have identified this uh, coupling pi, then you have solved this problem. Now, the easy way to see, see this problem is uh, if there, this mu and nu are discrete measure, this is a linear program, right? So you can replace integrals with summations and you can solve this problem. And this problem is widely studied in transportation and resource allocation problems. Some of you would have already encountered this problem. So now, okay, if you have uh, random variables, uh, this measures in mu and uh, nu in R, then you can easily compute this Wachterstein distance. Basically, what you need to do is you need to uh, get your cumulative distribution functions for mu and nu. You basically invert them and use this formula to compute the, the Wachstein distance. Now sorting, uh, you can basically what you need to do is you need to sort and this sorting you can do in order and log n. So there is an efficient way to solve it. Another, another uh, important thing is that the sorting is differentiable. We will need it now in the next slide uh, to follow a gradient descent procedure. So 
so the objective is to learn a gmm okay so we have this sample this set chi which is a set of our log scenarios and b is the samples in each bin now what we do is we partition our this our set chi into b bins okay over each bin we compute our entropic risk so now what we have obtained is the distribution of the entropic risk now what we do is we learn a gmm we initialize the gmm with some procedure now we sample b prime times n b samples from this gmm now we compute the entropic risk over each bin and we get a distribution over these samples next what we do is we match the washer's time distance between p hat and uh, this p hat orange here okay so if this distance is less than equal to epsilon which is our convergence tolerance we return the gmm else we update this theta here which is the parameters of our gmm via gradient descent and we use we continue until we have converged okay now in this procedure we want the sampling from gmm to be differentiable we also want our washer stein distance should be differentiable okay now let's see how our estimator uh, is okay this shy uh, the shion curve is a uh, box plot is our matching procedure you can see that this uh, this uh, procedure mitigates some of the underestimation issue you can see that uh, sa and uh, gmm are here and our our estimator is quite close to the true entropic risk do you have some question okay so now we have this estimator the challenge here is that it's a highly computationally uh, intensive procedure to learn this gmm right so can we do better can we design an a semi analytic procedure which can basically uh, do the job right so let's see uh, if, uh, so what we want is is to fit a tail to the distribution and we want the we want this tail to be such that we correct the uh, the underestimation issue the the issue is that we don't have the tail right in our data set so can we find the tail for the distribution this is the question so now uh, let's look at the extreme value theory uh, suppose this mn is the maximum of n random variables these random variables are iid okay now we have this fisher tippett nedanko theorem which says that as n goes to infinity the maximum of n random variables can converge to only three kinds of distribution either weibull fresche or gumbel we know this that these are the only three distributions in which our uh, this maxima can convert so what we do is we suppose that the underlying distribution is a normally distributed random variable now the distribution of uh, normalized maxima of normal uh, of uh, normalized uh, of uh, normally distributed random variable converges to gumbel distribution we know this so now the objective is can we fit our normal distribution such that if we sample n iid values the distribution of their maxima matches that of the distribution of the mn that we have computed from the data so this is basically we are matching the tails of the distributions okay so now this procedure can be done analytically semi analytically so what you do is you partition your data set which is the log scenarios 
into B bins. You compute the maxima in each bin. Now you sort them. This M.5B denotes the 50th quantile of your maxima. This is the 90th quantile of your maximum. Now what you do is match the, the 50th quantile of the maxima of uh, uh, normally distributed random variables with the 50th quantile of your data. So uh, this you can do analytically. So what you need is 0.5 to the power one by NB should would be here. You take the, you match this quantile with this and you match this quantile with this. Now, once you do that, you can find your mu and sigma. Now, here what we have done is match the tails of the distribution. What we, what we desire is the mean estimator, right? Here we have just uh, matched the tails. So what we do is we construct our GMM in such a way that with 50% probability, we draw from the normal, uh, normal distribution. And with 50% probability, we draw from a component, which is such that the mean of this component, the, the standard deviation of this component is zero. And the mean of this component is such that the mean of our GMM matches uh, the mean of our data. Okay. So this is a heuristic procedure after that. Okay. So we want the means uh, mean of our GMM to uh, match the, sam uh, the sampling uh, mean. Now what we have here is a semi-analytic procedure to get the estimate of our entropic risk. Okay. Now let's see how our EVT based procedure, the extreme value theory based procedure works. Uh, you can see here for project two, uh, uh, we are uh, we are, our median is above this uh, uh, true value. Now here you can see that our, our, uh, our median is way above the true, uh, uh, the true value. But notice that what we care about is the ordering of these three projects, right? So if you see for project two, both this orange curve and the Xion curve give, uh, give the lowest entropic risk, right? So both these procedures will still choose project two while other procedures choose project three. Another thing is that one can say that we would be pretty fine if our estimate of the risk is higher than the true one. What we don't want is to keep less money for the uh, for for uh, for our estimated risk, and later on see that our risk is much higher, right? Okay. So another thing to notice here is that as the projects become riskier, which is in this direction, our variance increases for all the estimators. Okay. So. Until now, I discussed the issue of estimation of entropic risk. Now let's see how we can use this estimation in, in, a, in a problem where we want to solve an optimization problem, right? So we have some data and we want to make decision. Let's go back to our gambling problem. In the gambling problem, we saw that this scenario occurs with, uh, and uh, it gives a loss of $50. This scenario occurs. Uh, this scenario has a it gives a loss of hundred dollars. We have no reason to believe that these are this the distribution that puts fifty percent weight on this scenario and the fifty percent weight on this scenario is our true distribution. The true distribution can be any distribution which is consistent with this statistical information that is available to us. So what we have in general is an ambiguity about the true distribution of psi. We don't know what is this distribution of psi. Now what we want is to gamble. Uh, based on the fact that there is ambiguity, right? Now, if you uh, if you use the empirical distribution, you may overfit to the data that you have seen. You don't want to do that. So, what you want to do is to solve a distributionally robust optimization problem. Now, suppose our loss also depends on our decision. Okay, Z. Z is our decision. It lies in the calligraphic Z set. 
this is the SAA problem. This is the problem of minimizing the empirical entropic risk. Now, if you use all your training data to solve this problem, you will see that you will overfit to the data that we have seen, right? So what people do is they assume that this empirical distribution is not the true one. The true one could be anywhere in a ball around this true dis uh, this empirical distribution. So nature is choosing a distribution in this set and nature is trying to maximize our entropic risk and based on distributions which lie in this set. And what we want is to find a decision that performs the best against the adversary, which is our, which is nature, right? So this is what we call as a robustly find the optimization problem. Now, what we want is to design an ambiguity set which can be suitable for our problem. Now, if you consider a KL divergence-based ambiguity set, we know that the worst case distribution should be abs absolutely continuous with respect to our empirical distribution. So the worst case distribution should, ha should have the same support as the empirical distribution. Now, the problem here is that we know that the empirical distribution is discrete and the worst case distribution could be continuous. So this is not the good set for our problem. Now, if you think about another popular class of ambiguity set, which is the type P Wachowski ambiguity set, you will see that if P is less than infinity, your loss could be unbounded. So we are left with a type P, a type infinity Wachowski uh, ambiguity set. And for this set, the loss would be bounded. Okay. Now, Bersimar showed that there is a nice representation of infinite in uh, type infinity Wachowski ambiguity set. So this ambiguity set consists of all distributions which put a mass of one by n to perturbation to each perturbation of the scenario psi i hat. Okay. So what we want is this is our scenario psi one hat. This can take any value from in this interval of length to epsilon. And, and the mass that this scenario will get is one by n, right? So for similarly for this scenario psi two hat. What we are doing effectively is we are putting a ball around each scenario and we are putting a one by n mass on that realization. Suppose your uh, loss function is linear. So the loss function is Z transpose psi. Okay. Now we can show that distributionally robust optimization problem reduces to a regularized exponential cone problem. So the cone, um, you can see that we have an exponential here. That's why it's an exponential cone problem. And uh, we have a regularization parameter F, epsilon. Uh, the proof is uh, quite simple. You want to basically maximize uh, this uh, risk uh, over the Wachowski uh, over the ambiguity set, which is the type three Wachowski ambiguity set. What you can do is uh, you can put a ball around uh, each scenario, and you take the maximum of this value here. Now you know that uh, exponent is monotonic. So what we want is we want to maximize the linear function over this constraint. We know that the uh, maxima is at the uh, at the boundary, which is given here. Now, once you plug this value in the log uh, uh, in the log here, then you will get uh, this value. So what we have is a regularized exponential cone problem. The only issue is how should we choose this epsilon? Right. So what is the best epsilon for our problem? The classical way to do it is to use cross validation. So we have some data for training. We have some data for validating. You solve this problem. You check what is the best epsilon. To do that, you need to estimate the risk over your validation data set. Now we already saw that there is underestimation. If we use uh, SA to estimate the entropic risk based on the sample. 
So what we can do is we can use our procedure, uh, our bias uh, by our bias correction procedure to estimate the entropic risk for each epsilon. Right. So what we want is to avoid overfitting to high rise scenarios and to correctly es estimate the, the true risk. To get optimal radius, we need to be able to estimate the entropic risk correctly. Right. Now uh, we use our bias correction procedure, which uses bootstrapping to correct the bias. Now I will uh, show you two applications where this procedure could be used to correct the bias. First one is catastrophic insurance problems. Uh, so what we want is to design an insurance policy for disasters like floods. Um, the problem here is that uh, uh, there are uh, huge losses that can occur with floods, and therefore there are not uh, many uh, commercial uh, commercial carriers which want to who want to uh, to basically insure you against floods. So we have a national flood insurance program in the United States, and we have recently Canada also introduced a flood insurance program in collaboration with uh, the private sector to provide insurance in the case of uh, floods. And you can see that in floods there is a systematic risk. Similarly, in 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 earthquakes, you also have systematic risk uh, because the risk of households is correlated. You can think that there is an epicenter of the earthquake. And as you move away from this epicenter, your risk is increasing or decreasing. Uh, but uh, 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 but the, there is a correlation uh, in the risk that each household observes, right? So, so what we want is to design insurance pricing problem. So what we have in a, is an insurance insurer who has a risk aversion parameter alpha naught. It proposes a contract. Uh, to household one and household two. The contract is as follows. Phi one is the premium that the household has to give to the insurer. Z one is the, the coverage coefficient. So if a loss of psi occurs, the coverage is ZH times psi, where H is the household. Now household H wealth is WH, insurer's wealth is W naught, okay? So either the household can accept this contract or reject, right? If the household, uh, when will a household accept the contract? We assume that households only care about uh, the the samples that they have seen previously, right? So they only see the empirical risk of their terminal wealth with insurance. So if the empirical risk of your terminal wealth with insurance is less than equal to the empirical risk of your terminal wealth without insurance, you will take the insurance, right? Otherwise, you will not take the insurance. Okay, uh, it's it has been observed that, uh, or it has been assumed in the literature that the distribution of loss for households follows the gamma distribution, uh, and uh, with uh, with the problem parameters a h and b h. R is the correlation between the household losses. We assume that the samples are being generated from a Gaussian copula with marginals being the gamma distributed random variables. So each household is seeing this, uh, these uh, samples from this distribution. And we want to find uh, a, a optimal ZH and pi H for each household, right? So now what we want is to minimize the entropic risk of the insurer under the constraint that under this, uh, what do we call this? Is like an incentive compatibility kind of a constraint. So, uh, what I have done is we have, I have taken the negative of the wealth. So, W naught is the initial wealth. If you if a loss psi occurs, you give ZH times psi and, uh, to each household, and uh, this is the premium that you receive from each household. And this is the incentive compatibility constraint that I already talked about. So we want to solve this optimization problem. Once we solve it, uh, now this is the, th this is the unregularized problem. We solve the regularized version of this problem. And uh, once we solve it, 
we see that if you use EV, uh, our extreme value based approach and the matching based approach, the entro out of sample entropic risk for both these approaches is quite close to the exact approach, which knows the all the samples. So basically, it knows the true distribution. So our method doesn't know the true distribution. It has only access to the samples and uses our bias correction procedure. But this procedure knows exactly the uh, the bias uh, the, uh, the the whole distribution. Another thing you can see is that if you don't use our bias correction procedure, this is the distribution of the entropic risk. Um, if you don't use the bias correction procedure and you do it, do your cross validation in a classical fashion. If you use SAA and don't use cross validation at all, this is the distribution of the entropic risk. Okay, now here, uh, what, what I do is I have these five households and I plot the coverage by premium ratio for each of the households. You can see that our, our procedure, both our procedures always give a lower coverage per premium collected as compared to all the other methods. You can see that the lowest premium by coverage, uh, the coverage by premium is for the exact method which knows the true distribution. And uh, this is the coverage by premium for all the households that are there in the data set. And it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's this household, that uh, each household is seeing a different uh, gamma distribution. And each household has a different uh, risk aversion parameter, okay? Now, next problem that we uh, solve is the portfolio selection problem. You have a set of assets. You want to decide how much money to invest in each asset. Um, now, if this is a, the loss function for this problem is linear, and we have already seen that we can reformulate uh, this problem as solving a regularized exponential cone problem. I have n equal to 1000. Uh, Alpha is 40 here. There are five assets. And uh, this psi is gamma, uh, this uh, GMM distributed with uh, five components. You can see that both EVT and matching have a lower entropic risk as compared to the DRO bias, which is the classical approach, and SA. So we can see that uh, our procedure is, uh, is able to. Uh, to uh, achieve lower out of sample entropic risk as compared to other approaches. So to conclude, we propose two methods to mitigate the underestimation issue uh, that can arise with estimating entropic risk with finite number of samples. We corrected the overfitting issue to extreme scenarios uh, using our bias correction procedure as the DRO with traditional cross validation approach can be suboptimal. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, sir.